Let's take a look at three different ways in order to create a configurable module as part of options and variance functionality in Creo Parametric. In another video, I showed the first method. If you already have an interchange assembly, you can choose File, Save As, and we have a command here to save this as a configurable module. And then you would just choose whatever name that you want to call it and you would end up creating it. A second method is to start off in a configurable product with an overloaded bill of materials and then transfer different components to a configurable module. For example, if you take a look at this assembly, it's got the symbol at the top of the model tree indicating that it is a configurable product. And we have three different versions of the jaw slide located in here. You can see that they're assembled on top of each other. So this is an overloaded bill of materials. First off, I will select the first component in here and we can use the transfer to module command. In the dialog box, we have the components to transfer and we're going to create a new module and I will click the new button. And here we have the assembly choice. Here's configurable module. You can call it whatever you want and we're using our default template. I will click OK. We've got two options checked in here. First, perform auto tagging for placement references of design solutions. In other words, based on how this component is assembled in transfer.assembly and if there are any components assembled to it, it will automatically create reference tags for those different references used. And we also have the option to open the module and review edit its tags after transfer. Let's click the OK button. And here we have our configurable module. It's got the one component in there. And based on the assembly in which it was created, it needs three different reference tags. The first reference tag is for that cylindrical hole. Here we have this cylindrical hole. Then we have the flat surface. And if you wanted to, you could rename those tags, which is a really good idea. I'm going to click OK. And now that we have our configurable module with our one component in here, we're going to transfer the other two components to the configurable module. Let's select the other two parts using the control key. And instead of using the icon in the ribbon, we have it from the mini toolbar, transfer to module. And I'm gonna click in here to make sure that the collector for the module is activated. And I will select this module that already exists. And I'm not going to perform auto tagging for these components. I'm going to use the tags from the original component, but we are going to open the module and review edit its tags. Let's click the OK button. And now you can see the three components listed in here. We have the reference pairing table in order to specify what is equivalent between these different parts. Let's select tag zero and it highlights this hole over here. I'm going to hold down the control key and select the corresponding cylindrical surfaces from the other two parts. Let's repeat that for tag one. And again, hold down the control key and select the corresponding references from the other two parts. And finally, for the last tag, hold down control and select the flat planar surfaces. And then we click the OK button. And now all three of those components from the overloaded bill of materials is located in this configurable module. And of course, you could open up the configurable module in its own separate view. And right now, again, they're standing, sitting on top of each other. You can use the exploded view button in order to spread them out so you can distinguish one from the other. Let's take a look at the third method of creating a configurable module, and that's to do it from scratch. And before I do that, I just want to show you that I have a few different motors open for a drone. And here's one. Let's go to a, another window. And this one is actually a SOLIDWORKS part, and I'm going to be using Unite Technology to create a configurable module that consists of both Creo parametric models and a SOLIDWORKS part. And let's go to the drop down list. Here is a third motor that I'm going to use in this configurable module. We'll use the new button and I'm going to change the type to assembly and then the subtype to configurable module. 
Normally I would change the name, but I'm just going to leave it for the sakes, uh, for the purposes of this demonstration. Then let's click the OK button. And I've got my module in here. Let's add our first module variant. And I'm going to go to in session where I have something open. Let me change the subtype here to assembly. And let's grab this first motor. And that's good. It's located in here. Let's add the second module variant. Let's go to in session and go to assembly. And the second one is going to be this motor. And there's located over there. You can see that they're quite different. And for the third module variant, you can go to in session. And I know it's a SOLIDWORKS part, so I will use that filter and then select this particular component. And again, they are exploded so that they are a little separated from each other, makes it easy to pick my different references. And in the previous method, I showed you how to automatically generate the reference tags using a reference pairing table based on how the component was placed in another assembly. In this particular situation, I'm going to create my reference tags manually. I will click on the reference tag and let's confirm the unexplode. And for the first one, let's select the flat planar surfaces that correspond to the different parts. And right now I'm having trouble seeing some of the components. I've got the one from the hacker and from the SOLIDWORKS part. Let me hide these momentarily. There we go. Now I can hold down the control key and pick this flat surface from the other component. And it's always a good idea to change the names of the reference tags. And I'll call this my mount plane, my flat, flat planar surface for positioning this component. Then let's go and create a second reference tag and let's use cylindrical surfaces for assembling it. And let me show this component and I'll just grab this cylindrical surface over here and I'll call this the mounting cylindrical surface. I'll just use CYL and hit the check mark. If I take a look in the footer of the model tree, there you see two of my reference tags. Let's explode these out again. And rather than repeat that process for additional ones, these are the different reference tags that would be used for placing these components in a configurable product and then swapping out one for the other. What I would also want to do is create additional reference tags for the propellers that would be assembled to this motor. For example, I'd probably want to use this cylindrical surface, that cylindrical surface, that cylindrical surface, and also some flat mating surfaces. So again, you would create reference tags for how the component is going to be placed and how other components are going to be assembled to this one. I'd probably also use some references for the mounting wires that are going to provide power and control to these different motors. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.